Well, folks, this is Mr. Bourbon. There's no picture of me today because uh, I forgot my webcam. Hey, but hey, we're good on that. I want to talk to you today about the lithospheric plate. We're starting Chapter 2 here. It's Unit 1, Chapter 2, uh, Podcast 1. Hey, kind of a cool picture here. we got the guy jumping up and down, and, of course, he gets uh, 80 years later, and he gets older. And, um, well, like it's like the, everything moved. You see how this... Uh, this uh, mountain here has moved uh, to the right, and of course he keeps bouncing in the same place. And so, um, yeah, you see the concept of uh, lithospheres and a lithospheric plate is the fact that they're moving. This is um, the theory of plate tectonics that we're talking about. Hey, some words that we want to make sure we have some definitions are crust, mantle, lithosphere, and asthenosphere. All right, everybody say it. Asthenosphere. Everybody say it. Asthenosphere. That's a funny word to say. Asthenosphere. I think you can say it now, can't you? And we're going to learn about something called GPS. I bet you even know what that is. Hey, what's the crust? All right, here's the deal here. It's important to understand crusts. All right, there's actually two kinds of crusts. Everybody write that. Well, how many kinds are there? Oh, that's right. There's two. There are continental crust and oceanic crust. When I say crust, I'm talking about the outside layer of the Earth called the crust. And there's two kinds. The first kind is continental. Um, that's where you have land, continent land. It is primarily made of what's called granite, the rock granite. And so there's lots of granite. Granite, by the way, is a less dense, so make a note here that granite is less dense than um, uh, the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust, um, which is the crust underneath the ocean, it's primarily made of basalt. And basalt is more dense then is granite, and the hence it actually so it actually we'll find out later the uh, oceanic crust can actually go underneath the continental crust, and we'll see how that kind of applies later on. All right, now the plates, the actual physical plates that are on the Earth, these are the main plates, and so you should print this out, or um, you may want to copy this down, but you need to know the different plates and the rough directions, too. You can notice how we have this thing called the Nazca plate, and it's moving um, to the east here, as you can see, and um, it is colliding with the American plate, which is kind of going uh, to the northwest, and that's actually what creates mountains and things, so it creates some interesting things. The Pacific plate is moving off in this direction, and we have some interesting things going on. They don't always go at the same rates, by the way, so that's intriguing to know, is that each plate is moving. By the way, plates move at an average of about two centimeters per year, which is not particularly fast, as you're probably well aware, but um, they still move, and so they're moving. I'll tell you later how I know that we, they move, um, and there's the Eurasian plate over here. As you can see, the Pacific plate on this side, of course, is a, you know, because it's a globe, of course. The Antarctic plate looks huge, but of course, it's a bit skewed because of the whole map projection thing. We learned about that in the last chapter. And then the Australian plate, actually the Indo, because that's also Indian, and that's India there, of course. Okay. All right, the mantle. Let's talk about the mantle. So the crust is on the top of the Earth, right? The crust, crust in the lithosphere, I can talk to lie. And then we've got the mantle. That's the lower mantle. And then we kind of have this upper mantle. The mantle is an interesting thing. It is a solid, but it's sort of solid-ish. All right, it has the consistency of like jello. Jello is a solid, but it so it's sort of a squishy solid. So it isn't like solid in the sense like a hard rock, like you know a piece of granite or whatever. And so it's kind of a sort of ish solid, a sort of jello-like consistency. It's really squishy solid because of the pressure and some things like that. Also down here we have a core, the outer core and the inner core. We're not going to spend much time talking about that at least today. And here's kind of a cross section of the Earth inner core here at 6,000 and some change kilometers, and about 3,000 kilometers we have a barrier between the inner and the outer core, and then we have the mantle a little bit further up, and then this thing called the lithosphere. A lithosphere, I thought it was a crust. Well, let's get a understand the difference here. Now, this is where we can learn about something called the lithosphere versus the asthenosphere. All right, ever say asthenosphere? Okay, you're good at that. All right, the asthenosphere, all right, well, how do I say this uh, to get it? perfectly understood. Essentially, it's the crust and the upper, upper mantle. It's called the lithosphere. And that's the part that moves. This is what make up the plates. Pallets? The plates. So the lithosphere has the plates, and the asthenosphere is the part that is the most molten. And this is the part that kind of moves the plates along. So I think probably to illustrate this best, it's going to be that we're going to watch a short little video clip about the asthenosphere versus the lithosphere. So let's do that right now. What are the lithosphere and the asthenosphere? The outer rigid unit of the Earth covers the entire surface of the Earth and consists of the uppermost mantle and crust. The upper part of the mantle is cooler and more rigid than the deep mantle and in many ways acts like the overlying crust. This rigid unit of rock is identified as the lithosphere. 
The lithosphere tends to be thinnest under the oceans and in volcanically active continental areas, such as the western United States. The average thickness of the lithosphere is measured approximately 50 miles or 80 kilometers. Scientists believe that below the lithosphere there is a relatively narrow mobile zone in a mantle called the asthenosphere. This zone is composed of hot, semi-solid material, which can often soften and flow after being subjected to high temperatures and pressure over geologic time. The rigid lithosphere is thought to float or move about on the slowly flowing asthenosphere. With the discovery of the asthenosphere, geologists are better able to explain the theory of plate tectonics. So that's pretty cool. All right, that was a cool video clip. All right, now let's talk about something in GPS. Now, you're probably familiar with GPS. In GPS, there's quite a few satellites. I believe the number is 24 satellites around the Earth. Global positioning satellites is what they're called. And so we've got these satellites that go around the world. And it um, turns out you only need about three of them. If you have three of them that can see you, then it can determine where you are. So why does this have to do with um, lithospheres and things? That's because here's like a very fancy GPS um, receiver, antenna type deal. And what they do is that if you place this somewhere on the earth okay so you've got you know here's Colorado whatever and then you place that little GPS right here it is so accurate that it can measure the movement of the plates you see since the GPS um, satellites don't really move um, well, it can tell you to how far actually a place will move in the course of a year so we use GPS of course for the things we use GPS like to you know drive our car or whatever um, but you can use GPS to determine where and how far the plates move. Even if it's like two or three centimeters a year, it can measure down to that level of precision. So that's the cool thing about GPS. Is, and in fact, that's how scientists know that the plates are actually moving. All right, so those were the geo words. Now let's talk about some more specific content that I want to talk about. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is something about C4 spreading. There's actually kind of a history here. Um, a number of years ago, um, there were some scientists. Um, Wegner was the guy who believed that what was happening was in the middle of the ocean, well, they knew this. They had already known this. In the middle of the ocean, there's this uh, mountain range in the middle of the ocean, particularly in the Atlantic Ocean. And what they decided, what he thought was going on, is that the sea floor was spreading, meaning that the plates were separating, as you can see, or the arrows up here, you can see them moving, and that's what's causing this. And as it turns out, um, scientists pretty much uh, are buying into that whole deal now, too, is that it, there is some molten uh, uh, magma underneath the Earth, and it starts to rise, and this um, these plates are moving apart. When they move apart, by the way, that's called a divergent boundary. I think we're going to have a podcast in just a couple ones where we'll talk about the different varieties of boundaries. But divergent means breaking apart. And as they break apart, the magma rises and they create these mountains. And you can kind of see the red uh, magma that comes up there. And then that creates this mid-ocean ridge. And then we can see where we have these mid-ocean ridges. So now if you look at this map of the world, the mid-ocean, at least the mid-Atlantic ridge, which is the most kind of common one we're talking about, is right through here, okay, and that's where we see the, the sort of the most uh, dramatic mid-ocean ridge. I believe there's some other ones. I'm not exactly sure where they are, but I believe they're.